Hello, welcome to today's CDHF presentation. Let's get started. So I wanna introduce myself. My name is Marley Hamilton. I'm a registered dietitian and I specialize in digestive health. I work for a company called Ignite Nutrition and we see folks for digestive health concerns all across the country. Today's presentation is titled Myths and Misconceptions About Laxative Use. Can't wait to dive into this uh, particular topic. So before we get started, just a quick disclosure. This talk has been sponsored by funding provided to the CDHF by Restorelax. So thank you very much, Restorelax. We'll quickly review some learning objectives. So in today's presentation, we are going to be reviewing three different myths about laxatives, answering the following questions. Do all laxatives work the same way? Should you only take a laxative when you're constipated? And should laxatives be the first resort when constipated? Let's get into these myths. So myth number one, all laxatives work the same way. Well, of course, we already know this is a myth. So let's talk about why. So no, not all laxatives work the same way. We have different types of laxatives that perform different functions to relieve constipation. So let's rewind that a bit. Really, what we should understand is what drives constipation. It's important to understand why we become constipated and everyone is a little bit different. So some of the most important factors that impact constipation are slow transit. So having a very slow moving bowel, stools that are too hard. So the texture and consistency of stool can make a big difference as to whether someone is constipated or not. And related to that, lack of fiber. So fiber is a critical thing when it comes to providing the right consistency to stool. Um, it works with water to bulk the stool and create a comfortable, easy to pass bowel movement. So knowing that why is really critical in helping you to determine which laxatives might be best for you. And we'll remember that as we're going through these three different types of laxatives. So the first type of laxative that we are going to talk about is osmotic laxatives. So if we think about osmosis, I think we learned about that in you know, junior high probably, These, uh, this is when water travels from one place to another. So osmotic laxatives are going to help draw water in to the colon and soften the stool. So this particular type of laxative is great when someone has harder stool, very um, you know, painful or kind of difficult to pass stools that are a bit hard. Um, examples of osmotic laxatives are things like Restorelax or um, the more medical name is PEG. Um, Lactulose is another option and magnesium. And I do wanna note that magnesium um, won't be a laxative at every dose, but when we take certain amounts, that can often help to influence how soft our stool is. Stimulant laxatives is our second type. So just like the name implies, these stimulate the muscles that are in our intestines um, and helps them to contract. So it really helps to move stool down through the digestive tract. So this particular type of laxative is excellent if someone has slow transit time. Examples of this include Senna, which can come in either a tablet form or a tea format, as well as bisacodyl, which also can be oral, and it can actually come in a suppository format as well. So that would really help to stimulate the very lower muscles of the rectum. And lastly, we have bulk forming laxatives. So if we feel that a lack of fiber is contributing to constipation, these can add that bulk forming fiber to the stool. 
and it really helps it make it easier to pass for a lot of folks. So examples of these products include psyllium fiber products, for example, Metamucil, as well as something called partially hydrolyzed guar gum, or PHGG. This is just a different type of fiber. Let's move on to myth number two. You should only take a laxative when you're constipated. So of course, we already know this is a myth, why is this a myth? Well, waiting until constipation may, delay, may delay relief. So we wanna get ahead of the eight ball in a lot of cases when it comes to constipation. Laxatives can often be used more proactively and regular use can help maintain a routine bowel movement schedule. And it helps to avoid stool building up over a period of time. If constipation is really chronic for someone, often reoccurring over and over again, um, using laxatives this way may keep, uh, sorry, using laxatives more reactively may keep them in the cycle of discomfort. So using them more proactively on a regular schedule can help to maintain an empty, comfortable bowel. Think of it like brushing your teeth. If you wait until you get a cavity, to start brushing your teeth, that kind of defeats the purpose. However, if we routinely brush our teeth and use it as a prevention tactic, that is going to help prevent cavities. So we can think of constipation very similarly. When it comes to using constipation more proactively like this, often osmotic laxatives are the way to go. So that is our PEG, magnesium, lactulose, for example, or maybe using certain bulk forming fibers as well. Um, these do take one to three days to work. So if we wait until we're constipated, it may be a bit too late at that point, which is why we want to kind of get ahead of that um, by maybe taking them more routinely. And products like osmotic laxatives are safe for long term use. I often have a lot of clients who ask me about laxative dependence and which is safe and which is not. These particular laxatives are very, very safe. Um, but if you're uncertain, always talk to your healthcare provider to see which options might work best for you, especially in this more preventative sense. Myth number three. Laxatives should be our first resort when constipated. Well, again, we know this is a myth. Um, when it comes to laxative use, we might not have to go there first. Instead, we can consider starting with lifestyle strategies and dietary changes to really support our constipation. So this could involve a lot of different things. It could be more related to food, fitness, sleep, etc. cetera. Um, but the ones we'll highlight are listed here. So probably the biggest thing we look at when managing constipation via lifestyle change is fiber intake. So often this means increasing someone's total dietary fiber intake, or maybe adding on a fiber supplement if we find that's necessary. But it's not just about qua uh, quality, sorry, quantity of fiber, it's about quality of fiber as well. And type. So there are two primary types of dietary fiber. We have soluble and insoluble. And they can both be used advantageously depending on what someone has going on in their bowels. But as a quick example, um, if we see that the stool is maybe a bit flaky or falling apart, there's not a lot of structure there, we may strategically use soluble fiber, which binds with that water and helps to form a bulkier, more comfortable to pass stool. Um, second, uh, I will mention to actually with fiber that Sometimes we find that people will need to actually reduce their fiber intake. This isn't as common because a lot of um, North Americans really struggle with their fiber intake. 
But every now and then someone is pushing fiber so hard because that's what they've been told to do for their constipation. And that can actually leave them in a cycle of constipation at times. Um, so just keep that in mind as well. Uh, secondly, identifying other dietary factors that can influence constipation is also important. So for example, a high fat intake or eating too few calories. I wanna talk about that quickly. So sometimes, especially with uh, folks who might be trying to lose weight or maybe they are very into fitness, it's hard to eat an adequate amount of calories. And when that happens, sometimes that can drive constipation as well. The less we put in, the harder it is to get stool out. Um, and also with smaller amounts of food, it's hard to um, motivate the muscles of the bowels to uh, move as, as quickly and rapidly. And related to fiber, we also want to look at hydration. So fiber and water need to work harmoniously to help form soft and comfortable stools. So you might be doing fantastic with your fiber intake, but if hydration is not also matching that fiber intake, constipation can still remain an issue. And finally, not as much a dietary thing, but more of a movement thing, exercise. So when we are maintaining regular physical activity, this can help to also stimulate digestion and promote regular bowel movements. And it doesn't have to be a big, huge fitness routine. It can be as simple as finishing a meal and getting up to walk around your house for four or five minutes, just to motivate those muscles to move. So those were our myths. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning, it is so important to understand your subtyping of constipation. You know, do you have slow motility? Is your issue that your constipation is very hard? Um, maybe you have pelvic floor concerns. There are all these different things that influence constipation. So if you're uncertain what you're dealing with, I highly recommend checking out this blog post on our ignitenutrition.ca blog. It's titled Different Types of Constipation, The Importance of Knowing Your Subtype. And for more reading, if you're really wanting to dive deeper, I highly recommend checking out this ebook from my colleague, Andrea Hardy, called Backed Up, The Ultimate Guide to Overcoming constipation. Um, there's a lot in here. I had the privilege of doing some edits for the book, and it's amazing. Um, in the book, Andrea reviews those subtypes of constipation and really understanding, you know, how to get the right diagnosis, but also how to track your symptoms and use that information to, you know, drive the diagnosis, explain it to your doctor um, so that you get the best care you need. And then, of course, she also dives deep into the nutrition and lifestyle factors we just spoke about and even more um, beyond those things as well. Um, plus, there's a lot in there about both over-the-counter laxative options as well as prescription laxative options, which is very, very fascinating. So some quick takeaways for today. Um, as we discussed, different types of laxatives work in different ways. We have those three key types, osmotic, stimulant, and bulk forming. And understanding your own constipation and what drives it is very key to knowing which products might work best for you. Laxatives can be used proactively and not just reactively for those who have frequent constipation. So using them as a tool can really help prevent getting backed up in the first place and maintaining a bit of a routine with your bowels um, instead of just waiting until things are at their very worst. And finally, diet, hydration, and exercise should be your first line of defense for managing constipation. But 
we do know that's not always enough. So there's no shame in using laxatives and they can be a really essential tool in managing this complex condition. Thank you so much and have a lovely day.